Jesus Christ, do you think you are what they say you are? You remember that day when Saul, who was persecuting Christians, was on the road to Damascus? And a blinding light came and he fell down and the first question he asked was, Who art thou, Lord? Who is Jesus? Why cannot we escape him? Why is he in our conscience and in our mind so that our plays and our poems and our operas are about him? Is he just a revolutionary hero? Or is he something more? He only lived 33 years. He never traveled more than 100 miles. He never had any formal education. And yet 2,000 years later, an entire generation is talking about Jesus Christ. Some say that he was a madman. Was he? There were others that said he was revolutionary. He'd come to lead a revolution. Was he a revolutionary? In the sense that he changed men's lives, he was, but he never led a revolution against Rome. Or was Jesus an establishment man? Jesus Christ is not the establishment Christ. He's building another kingdom. He's building an eternal kingdom. And then there were people that said that he was deliberately evil, that he was an evil man, that he was a devil. What was he? That's the question. Jesus Christ, who are you? Who is Jesus? We can't escape him. We try to run from him, but there he is. He keeps popping up everywhere. Our greatest philosophers write about him. Our greatest historians write about him. Our greatest poems and plays are about him. You go anywhere in the Soviet Union and you'll see images and art and much of the music has to do with Jesus. They can't escape him. Well, we know some things about him. We know he was a man. Jesus was completely human. He was representative of man because the Bible says he was identified. He was numbered with the transgressors. We know that he was hungry. We know he got thirsty. We know he got tired. We know that he had the joys of friendship. We know that he wept at the tomb of a dead loved one. We know that he had all the characteristics of a man. And yet, very interestingly, the Bible says that he never committed a sin. There isn't a trial or a testing or a temptation that Jesus has not been through before you and he resisted them and overcame them all. He was a man, just like you. But he was more than that. He claimed to be the unique, only begotten, incarnate Son of God. In fact, he claimed pre-existence. The scripture says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Before time began, he existed. He said, before Abraham was, I am, I am in eternal existence. No wonder they got angry. No wonder they threw stones at him. No wonder they tried to kill him. And no wonder they eventually did crucify him. He stood and said, I am God. Was he? Was he who he claimed to be? The Son of the Living God? Jesus Christ claimed to be the Son of the Living God. And you know, at His incarnation, or His birth, 
that was not his birth, or that wasn't the beginning, that wasn't the origin of Jesus. That was the beginning, that was the beginning of his incarnation. Because he has always existed. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God, the Bible says. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, the Logos, the Word of God, the eternal God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ and lived like a man among us. He was not just another great man. He was God in the flesh. And oh, the ethics that he taught. Never a man spake like that man. In the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I tell you that if you even look on a woman to lust after her, you've already committed it. He said, Moses said, thou shalt not murder. But I tell you, if you have hate in your heart against your brother without cause, you're already guilty. He lifted man's ethics to the highest plane and demanded that we live that kind of a life. He himself lived that kind of a life. How do you explain Jesus? Jesus Christ, are you what you say you are? You know, they only brought three charges against him to crucify. One, they said, this man loves sinners. That was one charge. The second, he healed on the Sabbath day. And the third, he claimed to be the Son of God. Was he the Son of God? Look at his authority. Jesus came unto them and spake unto them, saying, All authority has been given to me. I know one thing. He forgave sin, and no prophet ever did that. And then look at the death he died. Did ever a man die like Jesus? The lightning flashed and the thunder roared and the earth began to shake. And even the soldiers confessed that this must be the Son of God. Anyone that can see Jesus on that cross and not be touched has a heart of stone. They first took off his clothes. Then they took long leather thongs with steel pellets or lead pellets on the end and beat him across the back until he could hardly stand up. Then they put a crown of thorns on his brow and his face was bleeding. And they laughed at him and they spit on him and they mocked him. And with one snap of his finger, 72,000 angels had already drawn their swords ready to come to his rescue and wipe this planet out of existence in the universe. And Jesus said, no, to this end was I born. And he dragged and lifted and hauled that cross. The man that helped Jesus carry that cross was a black man. And don't ever forget another thing. Jesus belongs to Africa as much as he does to Europe and Asia. He was born in that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe. And Jesus was not a white man like me, nor was he as black as some of you. We don't know what the color of his skin, but it must have been a dark color like the people of his day, because he was a man like them. Don't ever say it's a white man's religion or a black man's religion. It's a world religion. He belongs to the world. When he died on that cross, they nailed him. They put the nails in his hands. And you know what he said? Forgive them, they know not what they do. Forgive them. Could you forgive somebody that's putting nails in your hands and you know you didn't deserve it? That's how he confronted the violence of his death. And then, on the cross, he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then he dropped his head and said, it's finished. What did he mean?
He meant your plan of salvation is finished. God can now forgive you of all your sins because Jesus had finished God's plan for your salvation. Because you see, God knows every one of you by name. He has the hands of your head number. God looks upon you as though you were the only person in the whole universe. He sees you and you alone. And on that cross, Jesus had the capacity to think of you. And he loved you enough to stay on the cross. Was there ever such love as that? When he could have been rescued and taken back to heaven and to sit on his throne, but he didn't. He said, no, I'm doing it for the joy that is set before me. Because he saw that he would be raised from the dead. He saw that there would be a gathering in the generations to come of a people for his name that would make up his body. He saw the day when we will reign with him in his kingdom.